Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's doing great today. Looking forward to uh, being with you today on this beautiful Monday morning, cold Monday morning. Let me rephrase that. December 11th here on uh, Monday. <laughs> so hope everyone of you had a great weekend. I hope you're all getting ready for Christmas as well. If you're like me, I uh, I tell you Amazon's my go-to and it deals with Christmas. And uh, I love getting out and shopping as well. But you know what? Hey, I love being, being able to buy for people. It's a, such a blessing. I really love that. So I am glad we are having people today um, that are on here with me today. And I hope everyone's had a uh, blessed morning so far. I'm looking forward to being with you guys today and seeing what we can target and talk about today. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the gifts of the Spirit. You know, I don't really talk a whole lot about... Um, gifts of the spirit or certain things you know when it deals with uh those type of things because i deal with a lot of law of attraction i deal with a lot of things about the holy spirit but i never really target uh the gifts of the spirit so with that said let me get my book here with that said we're going to talk about my book of the month which is receiving the gift of the spirit receiving the gift of the spirit now this is a pretty big thick book to be honest with you and within the book we talk a lot of uh, different things when it deals with charis being charismatic pentecostal that type of thing the apostolic age uh dispensations of god uh, I give an introduction. I give a lot of different areas of Greek and Hebrew words as well. So I definitely want to encourage every one of you to go right now and buy buy the book, paperback, or download it as an ebook. Receiving the gift of the Spirit on Instagram. You can actually go to the top where we call the quickie link. You can click on that. The moment you do, it'll be the first link on there, which is receiving the gift of the Spirit. And then if you're on Facebook, you can go to shop. Uh, the button that says shop. You can also click on that and you can uh, get the paperback or download the ebook as well. So I'm glad you guys are with me today. And I know it's going to be a fun, fulfilled, exciting uh, journey for us as we take this road for the month of December down the spirit filled lane. All right. Because I want to be able to reveal a lot of things to you guys. And let me, let me break some paradigms for many of you. All right. So I know in the past there's a difference between we'll say charismatic and Pentecostal people, even though the word charismatic really is not a term we use a whole lot anymore as we're progressing more into spirituality and, you know, the spiritual things that God has for us. But let me just sort of break down the two. Um, you know, being, you know, people that are more Pentecostal are going to come from a, from a point of view of, you know, uh, you know, them feeling as if no one has the Holy Spirit in them unless they are, you know, uh, you know, asked to give the Spirit in them. That is not true. That is totally not true. Uh, the Spirit of God resides, according to Genesis, over the waters, okay? Now, if you think about it, and this will give you guys a great, uh, a great um, introduction to the Holy Spirit. If you think about uh, the power of the Holy Spirit when it deals with the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis says what? In the beginning, you know, God created, um, you know, uh, Adam and Eve, God created male and female. You'd go with the whole flow of uh, the earth being void. You deal with the fact of... Um, the you know Holy Spirit hovering over the waters. Then you deal with the area in chapter one where it deals with God saying, "Let there be light." Now let me say this: when it starts off by saying uh, the earth is without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now let me say this for a moment: when we deal with uh, the void area and the face of the deep, we are dealing with the Holy Spirit because it deals with the Bible saying, uh, you know, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And it says the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters, okay? And now think of it this way. When the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters, guess what? We also read with Mary. The Holy Spirit hovered over Mary. Now, where does it ever say in the Bible that, the, the, that Mary, that someone came to Mary and said, hey, do you want to receive the Holy Spirit? You know, or the evidence of speaking in tongues, whatever. No, that was, that was not the case. Mary, the Holy Spirit hover over the waters in Genesis. The Holy Spirit's been there for Moses, Elijah, all these great men and women of faith. And the Holy Spirit was residing over and hovering over Mary as well, right? So because of that, the old uh, paradigm that says, you know, um, uh, you know, you don't have the Holy Spirit until you, you know, until you uh, ask the Holy Spirit to come in your life. That is hogwash. I'm sorry for my language. That's not real. That's not true at all. The Holy, in fact, if we want to get technically biblical about it, that means the Holy Spirit is in all of us because the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters that were full of void. So where there's void and darkness, you will find the Holy Spirit. Hello? Am I being, am I being biblically correct? Yes. 
So, so the first rule of thumb we have to cast down is, you know, I have the Holy Spirit, you don't. That is so not true, so religious, it's not even funny. So, so remember that even the area of your life that's void and dark, guess what? The Holy Spirit still resides there, still residing over the, over the, over the waters. Just like the Holy Spirit hovered over Mary, right? As far as the, you know, the impregnation of the, uh, of the carnate Christ, guess what? Then that means the Holy Spirit resides over people that are doubtful. The Holy Spirit resides over things that are dark. The Holy Spirit resides over things that are void. So that conception, that misconception is so anti, not, not biblical. And what we're trying to do today is basically break the paradigm between us and them. There is no us versus them, people. You know, the, the, the Bible says that Jesus is the light that lighteth every man. He didn't say a select few, a couple of them, those who get the Holy Spirit in them. No. So the us versus them is so not biblical, and you've got to begin to break the paradigm. What the New Testament discusses and breaks down is the, uh, the unrenewed mind. The difference between me and someone else is an unrenewed mind versus a renewed mind. And so we can't sort of separate them because God is omnipresent, omniscient. God is in, in all things and in all places at all the same time. So you have to begin to break forth that, that religious paradigm between us versus them. That is not biblical. Because the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, hovers over a lot of things that Christians wouldn't even ha wouldn't even get near today, right? And so you got to remember that. Even the Bible says, "Where much sin abounds, does much grace abound." So if you want to get technical about it, there is more Holy Spirit and more anointing in, let's say, a club than there is a church. Hello, because where more sin consciousness, uh, you know, is is evolving or, or excuse me, residing. Then it goes right there to show you there's more grace there. So, hello. So, you got to begin to realize that this is where you look at life and reality and you realize what is more important in the sense of uh, things that are truly uh, God centered versus man traditionally religious centered. All right. So, when we deal with the Holy Spirit, we are dealing with the fact that we're seeing, you know, the Spirit of God dis uh, distributed throughout humanity, throughout people. And then as Holy Spirit is in us, then we begin to awaken to what we call the gifts of the Spirit. We begin to awaken to a lot of the knowledge that the gifts of the Spirit are flowing in within us, okay? Now, have I seen people move in the gifts of the Spirit who actually are not, quote, quote, Pentecostal charismatic? All the time. All the time. So, you know, so you have to get rid of the us versus them. We might be more consciously awakened and aware of what's going on, let's say, than someone else. But it doesn't mean that we have a big Holy Spirit and they have a child Holy Spirit. No. The Spirit of God is the same. So because of that, we have to begin to realize that, uh, you know, uh, that the Holy Spirit is residing in us, all of us. And because of that, there is an awakening process that the Holy Spirit brings to us. Remember when, when Lazarus was um, raised from the dead? And remember the scripture, another verse that says, uh, which the Holy Spirit was on Lazarus, and another verse that deals with, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, is, is sort of that resurrection power, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, dwells in me, he will, he, he'll quicken your mortal body. We could say it this way, the same Spirit of God that was on Eli Lazarus, right? We could say the Holy Spirit that let, resided on anyone, let's say, who uh, who is in a place that looks, that's in a dead place, because it aligns with Genesis. Hello? The Holy Spirit is still hovering over those waters. And so you have to begin to think of the gifts of the Spirit, which is, which is, which is meaning that we are consciously aware of what we're doing through the gifts of the Spirit versus those who are consciously asleep or not in a state of awakening to realize that they too are moving sometimes in the gifts of the Spirit, right? And so awakening versus unawakened is very important for us to be able to understand. And so, so we can't look at, let's say, somebody to say, you know, oh, I'm charismatic, I'm spirit-filled, you know, versus, you know, a Baptist, Methodist, whatever, and say, well, we're spirit-filled, they're not. That is not true at all. Totally, totally, totally anti from the truth at all. So you want to begin to see this from a biblical point of view and not a religious, traditional, um, denominational point of view because the Holy Spirit resides in all of us. So now we get into what we call the charismatic gifts or the gifts of the Spirit. We're dealing with 
things such as words of knowledge. Now, a word of knowledge, let me say this to you. A word of knowledge can be something like, hey, by the way, this is from an awakened point of view. Hey, by the way, you know, the, 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 I feel like the Holy Spirit just showed this to me. I want to share it with you. And you give them a word of knowledge that is powerful. It is um, packed, uh, packed full of, of unfolding knowledge to them. But here's a key thing. Do other people give move out of the word of knowledge that don't even recognize what they're doing? Absolutely they do. Absolutely they do. I've come across a lot of you. I've watched a lot of documentaries, a lot of uh, movies, a lot of things where I'm like, man, that is so powerful. And not even knowing if that person is spirit-filled or whatever you want to call them. Pentecostal, whatever Baptist. So because the whole because the Bible says it rains upon the just and the unjust, what is the rain likened unto in the in, in the word of God? The Holy Spirit. Right? So it's raining down the, on the just and the unjust. Because the Spirit of God can flow in whoever it wants to, because that's what it does. That's what the Spirit does. And so because of that, you have to begin to realize that we are awakened in consciousness to begin to be made more aware of what is taking place within us. But it doesn't mean we have the, the truth you know, on the market here. It means that we're just awakened to that which lies within us. We're aware of what, what, what lies within us, raising its head to begin to speak forward, right? So therefore, knowledge... And words of wisdom, revelation can actually flow out of anyone, but you, but but people who will come into that reality and birth forth that, and probably give it at a greater depth or greater strength. They are alert and receptive to that which is going on. Are you with me? Give me some hearts and likes, guys. But when people say, "Well, you know, it's biblical," I once met said, "Then you need to read the Bible or not, if that's what you're gonna, you know, base your life on, right?" So we, now we look into the place of, and I'm going to give you, let me say this to you guys. When we deal with uh, the, the gift of faith, I want to say this to you. And that is this. How many of you, now I'm being, I'm being loving, how many of you have uh, never built a, a, a multi-million dollar company? Probably the never. How many of you have never owned a two-story home? How many of you have never raised the dead? How many of you? that is, you know, that's sick and all this and they instantaneously get healed. A, a, a nice car and you didn't get it, right? Thing. Is everything in creation, humanity, resolve, revolves around the knowledge of faith of the hand. Once again, here's that every man, not us versus them, every man, it is dealt to... See, isn't it interesting how the scriptures will talk about every, every, every man, every person, all this? Like, oh no, we only have it. Only I say, no, no, only I, only we have it. No one else has it. The things of God, because even the Bible says it is dealt to every man. Christians, oh that that's such a trigger for many of you. No, I want all mine in my pocket. No one else can have. This is dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every single man on this planet and woman and child faith inside of them. That is just biblical. Once again, awakening to the gift of that flows. So remember when I mentioned earlier about, you know, how many of you have never had a two-story with, with, with natural things? I'm dealing with spiritual things, okay? Just to where it's a roller coaster ride and just not mentioning everything, or excuse me, that I'm on like a materialistic roller coaster ride and not a... I'm on both, okay? So I'm, on, I'm, I'm in both the roller coaster ride of... So if you've never if you've never had what about if you look at people like Elon Musk? Now I know he's a little out there, but uh, but you know, or maybe Bill Gates, or maybe uh, any, you know, uh, Warren Beatty, you know, uh, Warren Beatty. Oh my God, uh, oh my gosh, well, I can't think of his name. Uh, help me out, guys. Uh, Warren, uh this guy all the time. Anyway, my point is see multimillionaires or people that are very successful in their life, in their career, who travel the nations, travel around the world. Buffett, oh my God, thank you, Victoria. I had a blonde moment, obviously. I don't know what's wrong with me. So, uh, so Warren Buffett, yes. So if you look at these men and women, well, if they're not Christian, manifesting more material things, hello? And if they have a, a level of faith, obviously that is, I'm not afraid to move out in faith. See, here's the, th the difference between me and them. We, uh, let's put it this way. We might be, our terminology might be more spiritual to say, hey, I feel like I'm moving in the gift. 
word of knowledge and blah, 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 blah is there but it doesn't mean because they're working for them it's obviously opted out to every man and then the bible goes on to say you know if you decide of a seed of a mustard seed be thy cast into the sea he never says it's for those pentecostal people who have by God that have the gift of faith. Everyone has the measure of faith and it's their faith that even is the size of a mustard seed, they can say to whatever mountain be thou cast into the seed. And if they don't, why? Because it rains on the just and all those out there who are not our Christian people as well. Because the Bible of faith, those who operate a level of belief and, and hope for, because so we have to get out of this us for no more mentality because here's, here's the and not for anyone else, even though Jesus made it plain to step the light, the light of every man. If that's not, we, we should have bigger homes, better cars, bigger jobs, own more healthiness, more joy should be better in all those areas. And in an, in, in, well, guess what? I can tell you that out of 10, 99, of 100% of people in the church are barely lucky to pay their bills. They're struggling. Why? Because we have that that it rains upon those that are holy, right? It means we have a more of an accountability, a responsibility, because we're made awaken the things of Holy Spirit and be able to progress further and do things naturally and spiritually, right? But us and they don't know, they don't know, I don't want something by. They've been operating by their level of faith and not even aware that what they have right as you gotta that's uh, that's right uh, you gotta walk the walk walk the walk you know works real for you but what's one and so therefore we have things such as faith right and bound <laughs> those who are that are awakened and alert and receptive to uh, uh, of and knowing what the holy spirit has to offer you should be smarter you should have more more prosperous. You should have more things naturally and I'm talking about, you know, what people would consider prosperity gospel. Do I, do I believe it? I'm stupid not to because the Bible tells me to be blessed financially. But God also talks to me and tells me and the spirit, uh, spiritual as well. Uh, and there's a leveraging or a balancing out there and I can my spiritual more than I can my natural. Then it says a false balance or an unbeation of God. So therefore, we can say, well, I've got the level of faith as about it. I was about to say, guess what? A lot of people in the world do know about it. And All right, come on. They're operating by it. Don't even so that. So it doesn't matter about that. What matters is that you are matching, we could say, of spiritual and natural to where you know and be in good health. Even. So it's not so much that I know Christianese terminology or that I'm reading my script. Plus, I'm also applying it to make sure the natural equivalent and equal to them an unjust weight. So Christians, a lot of you, guess what, are into abominable because we're not we're not bringing forth the physical to a level where we are left. That's what Paul mentioned. So because of that, we've got to begin to get in, not so much that we have blah, blah, and I'm like, then you should be wiser than the children of this. Maybe your theology is wrong with me. So this is where we have to begin to get into the diving in. If you've got the awareness part, we're aware of the Holy Spirit. I'm aware of what gifts that I have. Then here's the difference. You need to use them like some people, right? And you're and you're stronger and more potent out in the world, because the the same spirit that raised Christ went to you, and you need to begin to activate it, flow in you to activate it. Just oh, praise the Lord! I'm gonna believe God for a check in the mail. I'm gonna believe God. God, what do you do? And a man that doesn't work does. When you learn to apply my word and all my principles, and you get into the kingdom uh, walk, then you will begin to excel or receive that in which you are believing for. If not, then ten is possibly wrong. So it's not about name and claim. It. I am into is what I know that I am, what I know that I believe that I am having, that I am becoming, is that in which I am right now. Because I will never become anything great me now because there's always a revealing of the Christ, Stephen, and then see it. And there's always also an awakening of the
to myself because ezekiel it says uh it says show the fashion thereof you've heard me say that before which means ezekiel saying show every aspect and every angle of who you are to yourself because dark and dim and you start revealing seeing the revelation the revealing of the christ name has always been in you and not that in which you're trying to receive and get your you're a wretched sinner. You know, at church, we, uh, every once in a while my church was saying amazing. Never use the word wretched. I never have. I never uh, saved a wretch like me. I'm not a wretch. Never have been, never will be. Flesh is flesh. I'm one with him. There is no separation, period. None. The only separation that comes is in consciousness when I his glory because mentally God but here's the catcher that you got you don't see Adam at that means is he fail in consciousness because he was still there and God was for him if obviously he was no longer royalty still and he said Adam Adam where art thou and Adam said God was still looking for Adam because Adam for in the image of God but that's what Sarah consciously away from knowing who you you have which is all which is the allness of god in you right it gives me strength why because the me so so because the allness cannot be separated from god when people tell me well sin you know separates you from god brother and i said show me in the new testament where it says that you will never find a scripture and i've your bible out I want everybody right now, look at your Greek and Gordons, tell me in the New Testament from God. And everybody's like, oh, well, hold on, hold on. Um, wait a minute. You know why? It's not in there. It's not all. The reason why is because sin does not separate you from God. Consciousness separates you from God. God will leave you nor forsake you. There's never a separation. There's a power of you separated. You're in the palm of his hand and take you and remove you from the palm of his hand. And say, well, except if you sin or except if you do this, I'll, I'll, you know, this. Oh, where are you? Oh, there you are. Oh, ridiculous. Nothing can remove Nothing the can is when you get into a sin conscious nature, which means you feel wrong, you feel horrible, what you've done. And so the fall took place in Adam you understand the concept of that you realize i don't know where i'm going this morning, that you are not separated from god in you and you awaken every day as you begin to grow and if god more and more every day acting like god more and more every day it dwells in you so i've got the day a, a, a piece of knowledge i i did not realize that i didn't know that well actually i did know it but i didn't treasure in my earthen vessel rivers of living water not from the heavens as are flowing me oh pastor give me give me more from you pastor no that is degrading yourself out of you so you need to look in. you know when people say i just want an empire you get it i don't want it i don't need it is to awaken more to the christ that is already inside of me right your christ because we're all one in christ right not the power in me that you have be more awakened to the reality that i'm walking in in this new paradigm what that's why god told moses he said you know moses what to, to do here and god said tell him i am that i am tell him what tell him i am that i am Moses sent me when you understand the concept not a have a has been a one-hit wonder that you live all the time discovering the power in you then week and every single month and every single year and every single day as long as you're awakened to the things that dwell in you from god the kingdom is surprised by the update of in that moment in that season let me give you guys a great example and and not not to have everything anything wrong to do is keeping up with the joneses not okay keeping up with the things that god is distributing in the earth the ask they're going to receive if somebody knocks that door is going to be open for them if and so because of that we have as long as we awaken to the thing every single week month year decade then we should be should be to where we're not saying man i'm what's coming or going i don't even know what how to do this i'm so old-fashioned you know i don't even know anything about a computer i barely touch the own button. i don't know what to do with here you know what to do with it i don't the key thing is the reality i can update you i can every day as long as you pl stay plugged in to the awakening of the spirit on the road to say mode of every day recovering that which is new because the bible says even about the 
God will bring all things. It doesn't say it's going to download in you 24-7. It says it will bring all Remembrance. Can you guys get a remembrance to me and live me? So many of you are operating by fear and not faith. Saying, oh my gosh, I got to learn this. I got to learn this wisdom and knowledge and learning. I'm all about learning the latest trends. Computer, I, we have to as a minister. We're always learning. However, I don't put my faith in the learning. I put my my being attracts the things I learned for me. And that way I can stay on top. Because I have to remember, I have a resurrection spirit inside of me. Resurrection spirit it is, see how all this, I want you to tell me the truth. Does this make more sense in all the religion that you've been taught? Notice how all these scriptures are just aligning. You know, the same spirit that raised me from the dead. So there's a, there's a quickening. Another verse to back that, vo that verse up. The spirit of God will bring all things back. Directed in you. That's powerful. Go get the measure of faith, you know, to all men. So there you go. So you are here to awaken you. You are disgusting. You're a real, uh, it's amazing God even has any, any time for you because you're such a. But now that you've been saved, that is not true. Of God in Christ Jesus. You're the head and not the leader. And a servant simultaneously. Serve, become great leaders. You have the power of God in you. You have the kingdom of God in you. You have the vessel. There's a light in you and also in your neighbor. There's also a, a, a... Guess what? If the Holy Spirit brings in... Then that means allness is inside of it in any day, week, month, year, or God that works in us. So when you think about the whole the Holy gifts of the Holy Spirit, you have to think of the fact of, yes, awakening to what yes, awakening to knowing how they, so yes, awakening to the faith in you and putting doubt to, uh, to doubt where it belongs. Keeping your faith, faith to know what is powerful in you and how of resurrection whenever the gifts of the Spirit are awakened in, or are they so I want to highly encourage each one of you, get this book right now. Or download this paper back to the presence of unity and understanding with God that you are God. There's no separation between you and God. You're not a wretch, all right? You are a powerful being that has awakening every day to the things that God has placed in you before you ever in your mother's womb because God what you can be whatever you want to be because you have the spirit of God in you you can do through Christ the power of God that dwells in you is time for you to start and that power right let it come out of your be your belly let those rivers of living water flow out of your belly and, and stop saying God rain me the Lord what I need and God's like what's wrong with you I could have had a V8 <laughs> you know it's already inside of you it's all inside of you. the power of God in us I love it love it love it so with, with all that said order the book today or download the book please it while we're in December those of you that are not part of my monthly prophetic word program I'm telling you Start off the year right now and sign up for a monthly prophetic word to where everyone will receive a prophetic word from me. Because I, when I see your name come in on our, in our, in our database, I automatically go before the Lord and pray. And I get it out to you. I don't have to know anything about you. I, and which, you know, pretty much I can, nine times out of ten I can tell, you know. Uh, but sign up for the program. And, and get on that. Also, get on the Book of the Month program. Start off 2024 by hearing from God every month from somebody outside of you. So that way you can reinforce and awaken the things that are in you already.